Good morning. Welcome to Indy Chapel. It is good to be together. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Happy uh, gather together this Easter morning. We think about the hope and the promise that the only God can provide. We think about the joy that fills our hearts and the excitement of the moment. If you weren't here this morning and missed it at 730, uh, you've led an incredible, amazing worship opportunity. And it is online if you want to catch it later. Um, but they've truly blessed our hearts this morning. So I'm worshiped up and up and ready to roll this morning. I'm excited. I've got several cups of coffee in me. So <laughs> hold on for a little bit. We might go for a few hours if that's okay. Everyone okay with that? I hope you don't have a certain time where you have to eat Easter meal because it might be not there. So I'll, I'll try to get done in a timely fashion. But we want to experience the Lord and the joy of the Lord this morning. The excitement that only God can give us. Amen? Amen. So this morning as we gather together, i got two announcements I want to lift up to you. Um, two things. The rest of you probably saw rumbling around on the screens beforehand. They're all in the bulletin as well this morning. There's one that didn't make the bulletin. Uh, Bob asked me to announce uh, the Ramsey firefighters are having their chicken barbecue next week. Uh, and uh, it would be next Saturday at 3 p.m. up at the middle school. So if you like their chicken barbecue, be looking around Facebook for all the posts about it. So you'll be reminded, but just want to lift that up to you this morning at the Ramsey firefighters uh, next week at, uh, next Saturday at 3 p.m. Also, I want to invite you tomorrow night uh, to a time of prayer. Tomorrow night we'll have our, our second uh, Monday of the month prayer service. We do that once a month on the second Monday. We'd love to have you come and join us tomorrow at 6.30. Uh, we spend about a half hour just praying together and being together in the presence of the Lord. So another opportunity uh, to gather together in the presence of Jesus Christ. So this morning, let's uh, start with a word of prayer. Grace, loving God, Lord, we just pause this morning. Oh, we're so excited, Lord. We're excited about only the joy that you can provide, Lord. Lord, as our hearts are healed uh, through you, Lord, may we experience that faith that we find in joy, Lord. Uh, may we find that joy in, in expression of uh, gratitude this morning. As we uh, come to celebrate what only God can do, we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. They said, 
he isn't here. The tomb's empty. That immediately they were filled with a joy, a joy that we could we can't even comprehend. The joy that only Jesus provides to us. So as uh, we stand and sing, we have a this song we've sang a couple times this, in the last month or so. It's called "The House of the Lord," and Phil Wickham wrote this song uh, back during the pandemic when we couldn't come into the church when we literally could not be in the house of the Lord. And he explains it this way, is that while this is a building, and this is the house of the Lord, we are the house of the Lord. And that same power that rose Jesus from the grave that gave us women at the tomb, that joy lives inside of us too. And nobody, nobody, nothing can take that joy away from us because it's come from Jesus. So when you stand with us this morning in that celebration of joy, and let's worship the King of Kings. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds the victory.
His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He is risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, now I have told you. And as we sing up from the grave, he rolls, page 322. <laughs>
Gracious and loving God, Lord, we uh, come to you this Easter morning thinking about the joy that uh, fills our heart this morning. Lord, the joy that uh, comes um, from being in your presence. The joy that comes from worshiping you. As we've gathered around this morning, we have so many folks in our hearts and in our minds. Uh, those folks that we want to give over to you this morning. So in this moment, Lord, uh, we've turned those uh, joys and concerns into your cares this morning. Lord, that uh, where there's joy, it might be expounded. Where there's sorrow, there might be hope. And where there's death, resurrection. Lord, we give you uh, all that we are in this broken world. Lord, we know that you're ushering in your kingdom. So may we be part of that kingdom. May we continue to seek your ways in our life. And we continue to live as your disciples. As we give you glory this morning. In the sweetest name of Jesus, we pray. As your Son has taught us to pray. Our Father... <coughs> Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. As we continue our time of prayer, we think about the offering that God has made us. There's so many ways to give in our lives, through our prayers, our presence, our times, our talents, and also of our treasures. Our offering plates are found at the back of the sanctuary every Sunday morning. Uh, some folks give online, some folks give in, um, through mailing a, a gift to the church. Whatever way you give, if it's your prayers, your presence, your time, your talents, your service, we just want to bless those. We want to give God thanks for all the ways uh, that we uh, are able to give. Let's, let's pray this morning. Grace and love of God, Lord, we pause this Easter morning uh, to thank you for the blessings that you provide. Lord, we thank you uh, that our cups over full are with you. Lord, so may we feel the blessing of being joyful givers. May we feel the promise and the hope of the resurrection. And may we give you glory this day and every day. In the sweetest name of Jesus and all God's people said. Amen. I invite you to stand this morning. We're going to sing with our voices this morning uh, the doxology together. So let's just sing with our voices. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
You guys look good today. Is it a special day? What is it? It's Easter. So what happened on Easter? What did we celebrate? Can somebody tell me? Easter eggs. Easter eggs are really good. Is there anything else we can think of? Jesus rose from the grave. Yeah, Jesus gives us healthy food. He gives us things. Now there's flowers. Well, I'm going to show you something today, and I'm going to have to move over that way. Jesus 
is the name above all names. It's matchless. And there's no other name above it. We're going to sing a song called What a Beautiful Name. So we invite you to sing along with us always. Just lift your voices to the name above all names. You were the word in the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name.
a joy that the women felt. Now, think about the story as it, it began this morning in that sermon and reflection. Think about what was going on. The women came after the Sabbath. They had come after that Sabbath rest, that day where they were supposed to be at rest in the presence of the Lord, not doing anything else. Uh, they came in the midst of that Sabbath moment uh, before them, and they, and they came to the tomb of Jesus. Now, why did they come to be with Jesus? They had experienced what we were talking about last week, that week in turmoil. Have you ever experienced turmoil in your life, anybody? Been there, got that, did it this week maybe, did it yesterday, maybe even did it this morning as you were getting ready to get to church, right? Uh, maybe it was kind of hard, we know how difficult it is when you got kids or family members and you're sitting there, one of you likes to be on time, one of you likes to be 15 minutes early, one of you uh, has this opportunity and, and, and you begin to get everybody and try to get everybody here and that can be very stressful, amen? Let's just give that an amen, hallelujah, this morning, right? We know that. I know that each morning that as you come, it is a gift, it's an offering to our Lord. We come this morning in the presence of Jesus to worship Him. To think about what God has done in our, our, in our life. We don't come to listen to this guy, right? How many of you came to listen to me this morning? Okay, that was your main reason to come this morning, was to listen to this, this guy named Joe, right? No, we came to listen to the Word of God. We came to in the presence of, of, of what God could do with us through worship. Maybe someone twisted your arm this morning. I don't know how you got here this morning, but I'm just so thankful that you're here this morning. I'm just so thankful that you're here to hear the story of Easter once again. To grow in the presence of the Lord is, is a great place to be. The women were healed in this moment and filled with joy. Did you hear that in the scripture this morning? The ladies were healed in this moment and filled with joy. You know, they had been to the tomb, and when they got to the tomb, you remember what happened at the tomb? There was a violent earthquake, right? And a violent earthquake, and then they saw some angels. Right? They saw some angels. And what did the angels say to them? Don't be afraid. We had some angels out there this morning. Was anyone afraid of them? Uh, they were very scary to me. I was like, who picked those angels? But I guess they'll do, right? I guess they'll do. But when you think about the presence of being in the midst of the moment, here the ladies are, and, and they go to the tomb, not expecting to find anything, right? They go to the tomb to be near Jesus. They go to the tomb to be near Jesus. They didn't expect it to be open. Well, they should have known, right? The prophecies foretold all this for them, but they had to see and believe, right? They had to be in that moment. They had to come to the presence of the Lord. And when they get there, the angel says, well, well guess what? He's not here, right? Well, he says, do not be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus. It's pretty good. They know what he's looking for. Who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, they said. Come and see the place where he lay. In case you don't believe it, come and see the place where he lay. Come and see where he is. I know that you're looking for Jesus. I know where you're looking for Jesus. Then come see where he is. I know we come looking for Jesus. Let's come see where he is. Each Sunday, I hope that's the anticipation we come with. We're coming to see Jesus. Let's come to the place where He is, the place that has a purpose and a meaning in our life. Let's come with the hope of the resurrected Jesus. Let's come with the present. The story of Easter is so important. I think this is probably one of the most amazing stories in human history, if not the most amazing. I was trying to figure that out. Would that have been Christmas when Jesus was born, that was the most amazing? Or will it be the empty tomb that's the most amazing? I can't decide, can you? They're all so important in my life. Without the birth of Jesus, we wouldn't have the resurrection of Jesus. It's all part of our story. The importance of that moment when Jesus was born, and do you remember what happened when Jesus was born? There were some angels that showed up. And what did they say? Don't be afraid. They told the shepherds, don't be afraid. And here again we have some ladies, two ladies, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary that come to the tomb and here's what they say. Don't be afraid, right? Do not be afraid. I know what you're looking for, the Jesus who is crucified. 
And then, here's what they tell him to do. The angel says, go quickly. They tell the disciples to meet him in Galilee. Go quickly. And what do they do? They leave in a hurry. They leave in a hurry, and that probably should have been enough, right? Here they are expressing their faith in the moment. They have a faith in Jesus. He's risen, and they go and they run ahead. They're heading back quickly, and all of a sudden, boom! Jesus is on the scene. Can you imagine that? This Jesus that they've been waiting for, this Jesus that had died three days earlier, this Jesus that had been buried in the tomb, this Jesus that was, was gone from the world, right? The powers of the world said, we're done with this Jesus. We're completely done with Jesus. We're done with who He is. We're done with the problems He's causing. We're done with Jesus. Let's just kill Him. Get rid of Him. The problem is over. As a matter of fact, we're going to post two guards right here to make sure that His disciples don't sneak back and steal the body. Because they can continue this story, right? So they're standing by the tomb and we hear today that the earthquake happens and rolls away the stone and, and the earthquake happens and, and these guards, what do they do? They shake like dead men. Right? They're there. Have you ever been scared to death? <laughs> Have you ever had that moment where, where there's this death? And then we think about the joy of the moment. The joy of the moment. The other day I had an opportunity to go get my son Sam uh, from USI. We had just finished our Monday Thursday service and, and we're going and, and he got out of school. I didn't know he was going to be done on Good Friday. Uh, but he was, so he said, are you going to come get me? And I said, well, it has to be after worship. I can't get there before that. He said, oh, that'll be all right. That'll be all right. So I'm, I, I leave worship with full of joy. It was just an amazing opportunity to gather together with God's people. And I was just excited. And then when you're excited, what do you do? Anybody? Anybody, what do you do when you're excited? You turn on the radio, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to do. I was going to listen to some tunes on the way. I started with some worship tunes, and I'm like, all right, I've worshipped enough. Anybody ever get there? I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm good. I'm good for today. I'm good, Lord. I, I've been to church. I, I've listened to music. I've read some scripture. I'm good. I, you know, I, I'm really good, Lord. And he said, okay, okay. So I turned to talk radio. I like to do that sometimes. I started listening to talk radio. And I'm going, hmm. It's kind of depressing. It's not a whole lot of fun this morning. But I kept listening. I had to hear what he said. I'm like, oh, this is getting aggravating. This is starting to aggravate me. And all of a sudden, in the distance, I'm going west. Right? In the distance, there begins to be the sun that's setting. And it was a light pink color. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting, Lord. That's, that's a beautiful sunset. It's starting to get well. That's a nice one. Good job, Lord. Anyone ever tell the God he's doing a good job in your life? So that's a good one, Lord. And, 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 and guess what? It kept driving, and, and, and the, the sunset kept getting more beautiful as I drove. The farther west I went, the more beautiful the sunset went. And I was in this moment, I said, well, man, I'm done with talk radio. Turn that off. I'm going to just enjoy the presence of me and the Lord in the car. Now, you have to know one thing about me and the Lord in the car. My car is one of my sanctuary places. It's where I get a lot of alone time with God, and I really enjoy it. I, I developed that process when I was uh, going to seminary in Indianapolis. I lived in Lafayette. I had an hour drive both ways. And, and I got to spend a lot of time with the Lord. It's be always been a special place for me. It's always one of those places where I just get to lean into the presence of the Lord just a little bit. We have conversations. The Lord yells at me. I yell at the Lord. It's awesome. Awesome, right? And so we're doing this, and, and, and this, this, this sunset keeps getting more and more and more beautiful. I said, okay, God, you got my attention. You got my attention. He said, oh, do you remember what you were preaching about this tonight? Do you remember the upper room? Do you remember when the disciples came and I flipped their life on end? They didn't know that they came to the Passover that I was going to do something special that night. They should have known, right? Have, have you ever been in one of those moments where you should have known? You're like, have you been told this and, and, and all of a sudden you're surprised? Anybody been surprised? Like, oh, I got the email but I forgot about it. Or I made the appointment and I forgot about it. Or someone told me this about three years ago that this was going to happen. 
And, and, and this was going to be amazing. That's how, what happened with my wife. I had some friends that, that said, hey, we got this perfect girl for you. <laughs> and three years later, they call and say, you remember the girl that we were talking about? We got her number finally. I was like, perfect. Yeah, I'll call her. And, 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 and I did, and, and she's here today. <laughs> it worked out after three years, but God was preparing that perfect time. When I was thinking about what was going on in the presence of the Lord and, and, and what God was doing in the midst of that moment, he said, oh, remember, I broke my body and, and I, I gave the blood. And, and what an amazing thing. And then he thought of me, he began to think about what was going to happen in the garden. A garden. That's where Jesus was going to be betrayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was there, and he, when he went to the garden, he was praying for a while, and he told his disciples, could you stay away for a little bit? Have you ever asked anyone to do something? And they let you down. Any of you ever been, ever been there? You must not have kids. <laughs> Just saying. Well, here's what happened. He said, could you pray with me? And they said, oh, okay, we'll pray with you, Jesus. Jesus goes off a little bit further in the distance and they begin to pray. And what do the disciples do? They fall asleep. This happens a couple of times and then Judas shows up and he betrays Jesus. He betrays Jesus. <laughs> Remember that betrayal? Remember how he was betrayed? But don't get stuck there. Don't get stuck there. Remember the next day. The day when the world became dark and the veil was torn. And Jesus went to the cross for you and for me. And he was nailed to the cross. But it didn't end there. That's the good news. Amen. Can you imagine just dead Jesus? If we came this morning because Jesus just died on the cross and that was the end of the story. See you guys. Have a good day. Is that, is that the Easter story? No, that's not the story. Jesus came off that cross. He was put in the tomb and he raised from that dead. And we enter into today's story. The ladies had lived through all that. Can you imagine living through all those moments? They lived through all those moments. They just came by for a drive by of Jesus, right? You know, after the funeral's over, we come and then we visit the grave. We say, oh, we're very sad and we're grieving and all these things. And they're coming for that moment and then something amazing happens once again. Their life is turned upside down because the risen Jesus has been there. The promise of the hope of the Father of that empty tomb was there for them. And in the promise of the empty tomb in that moment, they were told not to be afraid. Once again, Jesus' uh, entry into the world says, don't be afraid. Jesus' return to the Lord world after that was, don't be afraid. There must be something about being in the, in the presence of angels where God says, don't be afraid to be with Jesus. Don't be afraid. This morning, I guess the message for you and for us, don't be afraid. The Lord is near us. Don't be afraid. God is there for us. Don't be afraid. God is in the midst of the healing. See, when we get to this moment, we hear about the women. We hear what they do. They hurry away from the tomb, and suddenly they say greetings, and they worship Jesus. Then Jesus says to them, give us what Jesus says. Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and I will see them. Go tell these guys tell my brothers. Now, you know, it's interesting that Jesus chooses the word brothers. He's been calling brothers all along, but do you remember what the disciples have done? When Jesus was at his weakest, what was going on? They're like, ooh, we got to know Jesus. And they just kind of crept away. Jesus said they would all scatter. He told them that would happen, but when they all scattered, Jesus didn't say, Go tell those fools that ran away from me. Right? Go tell those guys that didn't have my back. So go tell my brothers to go to Galilee because there's something more amazing in store for them. There's something more incredible for them than this very moment. There's a healing to be had. The women came to the tomb and they began that healing with joy. They were filled with joy, yet fear. They were afraid, but with joy. They had this joy, this joy that would energize them from the inside out. Now, joy, we're not talking about a feeling. We're talking about the inner works of the Lord in our, inside of us, right? We're talking about what only God can do. They filled with joy. They rejoiced and they met Jesus. And then they went on. 
The start of the Easter story really begins with lots of questions, doesn't it? Lots of unanswered questions of disciples, but then it ends in the presence of the living Lord. He tells them to go and share. These women, do you know what they were? They were the first evangelists. They were the first ones to see Jesus. They were the first ones to, to get to go share the good news of the gospel. What if we live like Easter people? A little excited. I want to see some joy on the face. Everyone give me a smile this morning. <laughs> you know it takes more energy to smile. I get that. But look excited this morning because you're Easter people. Go and share the good news like you have been to an Easter service. That you've heard the good news of Jesus Christ that is meant to transform the world that Christ's life, death, and resurrection is here. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let's pray. Gracious loving God, Lord, we pause this morning and give you glory. Lord, we think of the first opportunity uh, to share your story. Lord, the women that came to the tomb uh, to meet you. Lord, and there you went to tell them to go forth and share with the, the brothers uh, that you are risen. Lord, this morning you give us that same message. You say, go forth into the world sharing the good news that I'm risen. That I'm not just on the cross. I'm not stuck in the tomb, but I am alive and well. And that because I live, you shall live also. <coughs> and we give you glory in the sweetest name of Jesus and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Our closing hymn, He Lives. <coughs>
Go with the peace of the risen Savior. And all God's people said amen. amen. Happy Easter. Oh,